what is it that gives us power over the world? It's the fact that we're the most intelligent. And what happens when we're not the most intelligent? How would we maintain power over these entities that are much more intelligent, therefore much more powerful than us? Most observers and experts would say we're on this path towards superhuman intelligence and we're not prepared for success. So we're investing hundreds of billions of dollars into a technology that, if eventually it succeeds, could be civilization ending, could be a huge catastrophe. There are many misuses that are already occurring. For example, autonomous weapons guided by AI software can actually go out, find potential targets, decide who to kill and kill them. Because it doesn't require any human supervision, one person can launch an attack with millions of weapons. They can be selective, so you can wipe out you know, just the males between 12 and 70 or people of a particular ethnic group they don't leave a huge radioactive smoking crater and they're cheap and easy to proliferate it's hard to see any dimension on which they're not more dangerous than nuclear weapons major countries the US the United Kingdom Russia are currently blocking progress on a treaty the Turkish arms manufacturer who's selling them quadcopters that can autonomously find track and kill human beings they are for sale and Turkey is promising to use them against the Kurds. So that's one misuse, you know, surveillance, control, authoritarian governments are already starting to use AI to keep track of their citizens in the way that the Stasi used to do in East Germany, except that the Stasi required almost 20% of the adult population to do this job. The AI is going to do it for you, so you'll have your own personal Stasi agent keeping an eye on you 24 hours a day. You can also use it for control because if you know exactly what people are doing 24-7, you can give them a score. Sort of like we use credit scores, except it would be much more pervasive. I guess I should mention actually social media. On social media, content selection, news feed selection, these are all made by algorithms and they're learning algorithms and they're designed to optimize one thing revenue generation for the platform. They want you to click on things. And you might think, okay, the best way to get you to click on things is to send you stuff that you like. And that's probably what I think they thought the algorithms were gonna do. What those methods did instead was actually to modify people so that they would be more predictable and therefore better sources of revenue. The result is that the algorithms have modified people to have much more extreme political views or tastes in violence or tastes in pornography. So I think for many observers, this is a catastrophe that it's basically unraveling our democracies it may be unraveling our social relationships. This is actually an example of the general problem with how we think about AI. If you make systems that are either intelligent or deployed on a global scale or both, and they are tasked to pursue an objective that is not correctly specified, it's very hard to undo. This is the case now, even with these simple learning algorithms. If we have AI systems that are more intelligent in a general sense than human beings, it's going to be impossible to interfere with their pursuit of the objective that we've given them. Super intelligent AI climate control system, you say, okay, we want to reduce carbon dioxide to pre-industrial levels. The system figures out that the cause of all this carbon dioxide is people. So get rid of the people, solve the problem. Second wish, if you have a second wish, uh, I didn't mean that. What I meant was get the carbon dioxide under control without killing anybody. Okay, fine. Then we'll just run a multi-decade social media, social engineering campaign to convince people not to have any children. And then in, you know, 75 years or so, we'll have got rid of all the people uh, and then we can fix the climate problem. Maybe you don't get a third wish after that. So let's not design AI systems that way. Let's not put fixed objectives into the machine. This is advice actually not just for AI, but many other disciplines um, that form a big part of our civilization. You know, in economics, corporations try to maximize profit. We know that maximizing profit while ignoring externalities is a really bad thing. In fact, you look at the climate crisis, it's the result of a super intelligent machine, the fossil fuel industry, outwitting the human race in pursuit of a badly specified objective, namely profit while ignoring the costs to the climate. They executed a 50-year plan to keep pumping out oil and carbon dioxide while subverting the governments so that we couldn't interfere with this process. So this notion of putting in a fixed objective is a form of design or engineering that actually doesn't work. So what do we do instead? We design machines so that their only purpose in life is to be of benefit to human beings, meaning to act in such a way that 
human objectives, not machine objectives, but human objectives are satisfied. Once we have methods that are provably safe and provably beneficial, we have to have strict regulation to prevent poorly designed AI systems running out of control. There's still another problem, which is, well, what about the bad actors who read all the technical papers, they develop their own AI, but they don't want to put the safety part in. I think that's a real problem. I don't have a solution for it, but I can tell you that it's going to make the current malware cybercrime crisis look like child's play. So we need to get our act together on that. The other issue that we need to worry about is, is the fact that we're sort of lazy. We might find that it's just too tempting to have the AI system just sort of look after everything for us. You know, if you've seen the movie WALL-E, the human race is on this cruise ship that just goes on forever and uh, they're just passengers. The machines look after everything and the humans become obese and completely stupid. They don't learn anything because there's no point. You know, why would you go to school for 15 years to learn something when the AI system where he does it better. And so you could get this situation where we have infantilized, enfeebled species that is essentially completely dependent on its machines. It's happening in some ways already. Machines are taking over some functions like navigating in cities. I think it's a slow, insidious process. We need a cultural response to it. It's not a technological problem. It's up to our culture to re-emphasize the value of knowledge, of learning, of capability to recognize dependency when, when we see it and uh, make it socially undesirable. There are many different actors in this play. Within the AI community, there's a defensive kind of denialism creeping in, right? People don't want to admit that what they're doing, right, the direction they're driving the human race is actually a cliff. And so we have a big task ahead of us to convince everyone that they have to take this seriously, but also to provide a replacement, right? If we're saying don't design AI systems that way, do it this way, but that way, the old way, you know, we have 70 years of technology that we've built up. The new way, most of the technology doesn't exist yet. So we have our work cut out for us. Join Double Down News on Patreon and be a part of the future of journalism. We still need humans to do this work.